Hey guys, it's Agonzi Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the Oculus Quest 2. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the XR Interaction Toolkit to work with the Quest 2. I'm also going to walk you through what you see playing behind the scenes, which is a demo that I created by downloading an asset from the Asset Store, which I'm going to be putting in the description of this video. I'm also going to walk you through how to set up an XR Rig. We're also going to be looking at the left controller, the right controller, how do we set up a ray? How do we change the distance of the ray so that we can actually teleport to multiple locations, which means that we're going to be adding the actual teleportation provider. I'm also going to be showing you how to add the locomotion system and a couple more components. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play so that I can show you what functionality we're going to have in this video. So as you guys can see, I'm going to, I can see the rays, right? There's two rays, one on the left side and also one on the right side. We can also look at this beautiful asset, which I'm going to be linking in the description of this video. But the idea here is that the terrain is actually, you know, we can actually traverse the terrain. So if I were to point down, you can see that the line is changing color, the same thing with, you know, the right controller. And the reason that it does that is because it's detecting, you know, that we can actually move to that location. So what I can do is I can traverse the entire terrain. I can just keep, you know, teleporting to that area. And we can look around and look at the sun. And the other feature that this has, in addition to you know teleporting with the left controller and also the right controller, is we can also do what's called a snap rotation. And a snap rotation works just like it did you know on the previous version of the quest. So we can keep teleporting and going around and you know look at the shadows. Everything looks beautiful. Let me see if I can find a little area here that I really like where we have water. And we can get closer here and look around i think that area was down let me just go ahead and go on that area but you can see you know you get the idea that we can traverse the whole thing i can also change the size of the race if i wanted to right now i have the default size but if you wanted to change that you can also change the color of the of the ray. let me go over there i think i found where the where the water is there we go we're just right on the fake water but the cool thing is if I, if I wanted to teleport to, you know, a small distance, I can just, you know, do that. And I think that helps when it comes to, you know, not getting very nauseous because I get nauseous if I, if I was using a, a, a normal, you know, player controller where this one is more of a snapping. You guys can see the water. I can also look at the trees. You can see the sun over there. It's beautiful. I can traverse across the river if I wanted to. And there we go. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity. I'm going to show you what are some of the components that you'll need to add in order for you to get this to work. All right, guys. So the first thing that I want you to do is download this asset. We're going to go into the Asset Store and make sure that you search for Dream Forestry. It's completely free and it has basically an environment with trees and the sun and a lot of brief apps that we can use for the demo for today. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my assets and then just search for that because I already imported into Unity. And then I'm just going to go ahead and import. And I already downloaded it. I'm importing it now. Let's wait until this finishes. It's going to tell me, you know, what things I need to import. And we can just click on import. Once it finishes, I'm going to show you a couple more things that we're going to need to do, such as, you know, getting the XR toolkit set up and also getting a couple of components that we're going to need in order for us to be able to run this scene with the Oculus Quest Link. All right, so it looks at like that finish important. You can see a couple of folders in here, which is, you know, the terrain add upgrade, which is, you know, part of their asset. And then Dream Forestry, which is going to have a demo that they, you know, they, they provide. And we're going to actually be modifying this and instead of actually creating it from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and double click it. It's going to take us to this scene right here, but I don't really want to, I don't want to use everything that they have because if you hit play, it's more built for PC. You can move around and it basically just looks really beautiful. So what I'm going to do is instead of using that kind of layout, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a couple of things in here and I'm just going to go ahead and let's go ahead and get rid of the canvas, the demo canvas, the camera. We don't need the camera because the camera that we're going to need is going to be, you know, the one from the actual XR component. So we're going to leave that there. Let's go ahead and go into a window and then package manager. And we're going to install another component, which is going to be the XR toolkit. So make sure that you change this to the unit registry. The other thing that is important to, to do is go, go into settings here and then click on advanced and make sure that you have this enable preview package. 
because the asset that I'm going to be installing, which is the XR Interaction Toolkit, is in preview still. So we're just going to make sure that we enable that so we can find it. You guys can see here that the version available is 0.9.4. Click on Install. It's going to install it, and then we're going to be adding you know, a couple XR components. All right, so it looks like that finished com installing. So what we can do now is let's go ahead and look at the camera here. And the camera here has a post-processing behavior. I'm not going to be using post-processing for the Quest 2, at least for now, because I want to get things going before we, you know, before we do that. You can see that it changes, and this is going to be the scene that you saw from the beginning of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, put our XR rig right about here, close to the water, so that we can have, you know, we can have that area that we can start exploring. So what I'll do is right click on the hierarchy here and then go into XR. And there's a couple of components here. These are going to be all the components that I'm going to be covering in this series. I already covered them in previous videos, but I think I'll have to, I want to do it with the Oculus Quest 2. Let's go ahead and select room scale XR rig. And as soon as we do that, you're going to see that it's going to put it at the pivot position. In fact, you can see it right here. Everything is set to zero. And then it also, it's going to have a camera offset. It's also going to have the, the actual camera. And then it comes with the left-hand controller, a right-hand controller. And the cool thing with this is it already has an XR Ray Interactor. That is the Ray that I show you in the beginning of the video with the red color on the actual Ray. So you can change some of these settings if you want to change the color and some of the properties, you're more than welcome to do that. It's going to keep it simple for this video, and then we'll just go ahead and place it. Let's see if we can find the location where we were in the beginning. I think I can just do something like that. I want it to be close to the water, so we can be perhaps right around this area. And let's go ahead and put ourselves right here. I'm also going to be offsetting ourselves just a little bit so that we can see everything. And we can also use the camera offset here, which is the Y axis. So let me change this back. And then what I'll do is I'll change this to something like three, something like five. And then we can have an offset in there. In, in reality, we can just be on the floor. I think that's OK, because we want to traverse through the terrain. So if we have that number five or less number, I think it's just up to you how you want to set that up. All right, so that it's going to basically allow us to look around. It just has an extra rig, and we can, you know, look at the controllers at this point and look at the rays. All right, let's go ahead and hit play and see what we have so far. So you guys can see that I can see my rays, right? Let me go ahead and go into it. But we can really not traverse anything because that's the only components. We're kind of stuck here in the grass. There's really nothing that I can do. I can just look up and then. I, I'm pretty much stuck in the way to raise on, on the controller. So what I want to do is I want to show you how we can use the locomotion component and also the this nab rotation so we can rotate around. So let's go ahead and, and work on that. All right, so what we need to do is we need to go into the XR rig. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a couple of components in here. One of them is going to be the snap turn provider. It looks like that's already selected. So we'll just go ahead and add it. And it's going to ask us what controllers we want to use for the snap rotation. I'm going to set it, I'm going to set the index to two. This is an array. And I'm going to set the, grab the left hand controller and then drag it into the element zero. And then also the right hand controller and drag it into the element one. That way we're going to start now snapping either with the left controller or the right controller. You can also change the, you know, the turn amount. I think 45, it's fine. Also a dead zone if you wanted to, you know, specify a dead zone. And the activation timeout. I think I just left those by default in the, you know, in the previous videos. And then the other thing you can do is you can also change the source. So if you wanted to use the primary to the axis to do the actual turn, you can do that, or the secondary to the axis. I'm going to leave it as default. And then what we need to do now is I'm going to be adding the locomotion system. That's what's going to allow us to move around, and also the teleporting provider. And what I'm going to do is this, this I think by default, it'll try to grab the XR rig. I'm just going to go ahead and associate it just in case. And also for the teleporting provider, we're going to be just adding the locomotion system and associating that with the system. Okay, so we should have all the different components that we need in order in order for us to teleport to different location. And now, and also do a rotation. So let's go ahead and go back into play mode. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And let's see what we have right now. So, so right now we can we can do you know I can do the snap rotation and basically you know rotating around. And we can rotate. I think that it's working, but I cannot teleport. And what it should happen 
and I, I actually put the ray against the terrain, and I should be able to teleport to that area. But right now, it doesn't let me do. It doesn't let me do that. The reason that it doesn't let me do that is because we haven't really added the component that is going to allow us to teleport to another area. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So we have what's called a terrain in this in this component, and the terrain is made up of you know it's basically the floor on the entire scene. So what I what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a component to that. So let's go ahead and just search for teleport. And you're going to see that we have either a teleportation anchor or we have an area. If we do the, the anchor, it's just going to be a specific area, right, that we can teleport to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an area. And what that's going to do, it's going to make the entire terrain teleportable, right? Like we can actually teleport anywhere in the terrain where it finds a collision. So what if I an actual collider? In this case, the terrain collider is the whole thing. So that's basically everything that we need to do in order for that to work. Let's go ahead and test it out. Just going to go ahead and hit play. And let's see if this works. So now you can see that, you know, we, we can ac actually see the ray changing colors. So if I move my controller up, it's actually turned to red. If I move it down, I can actually, you know, teleport to that location. I can teleport to that location. And we're going to start looking around, and that just, you know, makes, makes a really good implementation on, on how we can move around this, this area. Let's see if we can go ahead and, and rotate so you can see how I can also do a snap rotation. And let's see if we can find the water. For some reason, I always like to, to go to the water area. And I think I'm getting closer to the water, perhaps. But I'm using, you know, the snap rotation functionality. I'm also using the teleportation so we can get you know close to the water if i wanted to get to that area so this is really accurate right like if i wanted to just get right across the river i can do that and i can just use my snap rotation to look back and we can just look around i think the sun in this scene looks really beautiful so i wanted to see where let's go ahead and go into that hill over there so again, if you wanted to change the ray, you know, distance, you can do that as well. Why don't we do that so we can we can see some differences? I'm going to change the ray distance on the right controller and then leave the one on the left controller as it is. Okay, so if you wanted to change the, the actual ray distance, you can change it here by going into either the left controller or the right controller. So for this one, I'm going to do it on the right controller. You're going to go into XR Ray Interactor. And let's go ahead and change this to a number such as double the amount. So I'm going to set it to 60. Let's go ahead and hit play. And let's see if those changes are working. And let's see if we have a bigger distance on this ray. I honestly don't see, let's see if we can see, let me go back. And I think, okay, there we go. So you can see the ray distance, like the right controller, it's turning white, where the left controller is still red. Uh, still red. That means that the ray distance is higher on the right one. It's already colliding with the floor, where the one on the left is, is much, much shorter. It's 30 instead of 60. We can go ahead and go here and look around. Okay, so I think that's everything that I wanted to cover, guys. So just to give you an overview of what we did, we looked at adding the XR rig. I also show you how to add the, you know, how to add the right controller, the left controller, the XR ray for both controllers, which are added by default. And I also show you how to add the teleporting provider and also the locomotion system. So if you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any other questions on the Oculus Quest 2 development, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check me out on patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code. I'm also letting people know what videos I'm going to be working on the upcoming week. So that might help a lot of you that are working on either AR or VR. Thank you for your time, guys.